Welcome back to Day Tripping Southwest Florida. Today's adventure takes us to Lighthouse Beach on Sanibel. The minute you go through the toll booths and smell the salt air of the Gulf of Mexico, you know you are in a tropical paradise. The Causeway are a series of man-made islands that link Sanibel to the Florida mainland. They bisect San Carlos Bay a short distance from the mouth of the Caloosahatchee River and allow bay and gulf side access. These beaches are prime access for every beach going activity including picnicking, windsurfing, shelling, swimming, fishing, and more. There are restrooms at select beaches and plenty of beach to choose from. Another big draw for the causeway is that there is no parking fee and you can pull your vehicle right up to the water's edge. The causeway is a very popular area for locals, so expect a large crowd on holidays and weekends. The causeway islands are open from 7 a.m. to dusk seven days a week. Sanibel is one of the unique barrier islands of the world. Having an east-west orientation, when most islands are north-south, hence the island is gifted with great sandy beaches and an abundance of shells, winning awards for being one of the best shelling beaches and one of the best overall beaches in Florida. Now, as those island vibes kick in, enjoy this ride out to Sanibel.
Both Sanibel and Captiva both have lovely public beaches. There are five accesses on Sanibel. The Lighthouse, Gulfside Park, Tarpon Bay, Bowman's, and Blind Pass. On Captiva, there are two accesses, Blind Pass and Captiva Beach. The fee for parking is $5 an hour. For today's adventure, we're going to focus on Lighthouse Beach Park. When you get to the four-way stop, you just hang a left. Shell lovers from all over the world make pilgrimages to tiny Sanibel Island's Gulf Coast. Considered the best shelling spot in North America, according to Travel and Leisure Magazine. Sanibel's beaches are protected by a broad underwater shelf, perfect for gently receiving deliveries from shell-laden currents. Sanibel Island shelling has become so popular with beachcombers that some hotels offer rooms equipped with special sinks and work tables for cleaning and packing the day's yield. Other channels, Facebook friends, also voted Sanibel Island as their best shelling beach in America. With the abundance of seashells found on Sanibel Island in Captiva, collecting them has become a favorite pastime. In fact, so many people go shelling when visiting the islands, the bent at the waist stance one takes when bending over to retrieve seashells has been dubbed the Sanibel Stoop. Sanibel Island is shaped in a curve along the coastline among a string of other more orderly straight and narrow islands. The west end torque of Sanibel's south end acts like a shovel scooping up all of the seashells that the Gulf imports from the Caribbean and southern areas. People come from all over the world, drawn by the song of the seashell. They parade along the sand, doubled over in a stance that's been dubbed the Sanibel Stoop. Every March they gather to compare and appreciate shell collections and shell art at the annual Sanibel Shell Fair and Show. Throughout the year, shell shops sell seashells by the seashore by the thousands. The best time to go shelling is at low tide when the seashells are more exposed, especially during the low spring tides, and after gulf storms have driven the shells up the gulf onto our shelling beaches. Remember, there is no live shelling allowed. If you find one that is alive or moving, throw it back in the water, please. There are plenty more to choose from. The beaches of Sanibel also offer a great opportunity for bird watching. There is a very large variety of shorebirds to be seen daily.
The Sanibel Lighthouse is located on the eastern end of the 12-mile Long Island. The idea to build the lighthouse was first proposed by some of the settlers on the island in 1833 when they petitioned for one to be built. However, no real action was taken until 1883 when they finally received the $50,000 they needed to fund the construction. The building of the lighthouse finally started in February of 1884. Although they faced complications along the way, in only a few short months the lighthouse was finally completed. It was first lit on August 20, 1884 with kerosene oil. In order to get to the top of the lighthouse, the lighthouse keeper had to walk up an external spiral staircase. The lighthouse had a lighthouse keeper until 1949 when it became fully automated. After being owned by the Coast Guard, the lighthouse was finally given to the city of Sanibel in 2004. The city began to raise money to fix up the lighthouse, and in 2013 they raised enough to begin the restoration. The total cost of the restoration was close to $270,000. The original lens used at the top of the lighthouse is on display at the Sanibel Historic Museum and Village. The total height of the lighthouse is 98 feet and there are 127 steps to get to the top. I found this painted seashell on my way over to the pier. On the back it listed a Facebook page called Sanibel Seashells. The fishing pier near Sanibel Lighthouse is tucked around the northern facing tip of Point Yabel. The parking lot is accessible from Dunlap Road and is open from 8 a.m. to sunset daily. The boardwalk and tea dock at the end of the pier are always busy with anglers and fishing enthusiasts. Popular catches include redfish, snook, sheephead, black drum, snapper, and other species. There are bench seats on the pier and a shelter providing shade, but usually the dock is breezy and cool, even on the hottest summer day. Expect to see dolphin, flying fish, stingrays, and shorebirds, as well as hungry pelicans looking for an easy meal. In winter, ospreys regularly nest in the wildlife refuge nearby. This is a lesser crested tern. You see big flocks of these fishing along the Sanibel Causeway and along the beaches of Sanibel and Captiva.
Heading to and from the pier, there are a few very nice raised boardwalks. There's another hidden gem. This path runs from the lighthouse over to the main parking area. It runs parallel to the beach and offers fantastic views of the Gulf of Mexico and some of the flora and fauna that is associated with the island. About halfway down on the right, there's a very large informational billboard that talks about all the different seashells and animals you can expect to see during your stay at the Lighthouse Beach. The area of the path that bumps out over here on the left is the home of a giant gopher tortoise. He has a burrow that is sectioned off right there. I didn't see him today, but I'm sure he's out looking for some lovely hibiscus flowers or for some other things to eat. This area up ahead you can see is paved so that wheelchairs and electric carts can make it out to the beach to enjoy the beautiful views of the Gulf of Mexico. Courtesy beach wheelchairs can be provided with a 24 hour notice to the city of Sanibel Police Department. You can contact them at 239-472-3111. They're based on availability. No trip to the beach is complete without having ice cream. We always stop at the Dairy Queen on Sanibel. It's been there nearly 50 years. You can see from these photos that we've been there a bunch of times. I'm partial to the peanut butter parfaits and Janice and Lily like their sundaes. I 
I've enjoyed sharing this piece of paradise with you today. You can see our family loves it and will continue to come here for years to come. The memories we make will last forever. Until next time, thank you for watching Day Tripping Southwest Florida.